Hey Ross, Tim, Graham. Hey, hey guys, good, how's it going? Good, good. Hi everyone. Hey, all right. We got a small, small group today. Mm -hmm. So far. It's funny because we've been so busy lately, but I was expecting a lot more people to join. But yeah, cool. It's trying. Yeah. Has the link changed, Ross? Yeah, I'll give it time. A yeah. Little bit. yeah. I just wonder if the link's changed. I, I'm gonna look into that after after this today because I mean it seems like everyone has was having problems with it. So I I've tried the Zoom link, I've tried the Calendly link, I've tried I think what I'm gonna do now is just make a one Google event and then make that a repeatable Google event with the same Zoom link. So that way you can just I how most people do it, yeah. Well, yeah. And I thought I've tried that in the past, but you know, we'll see. Hey Tim. Hi Tim. Hey, how's it going? Oh good. Oh good, thank you. Great. Got a small, smaller group today, but I think we're That's... growing. Uh, right, not to. Hi, Alex. Yeah. Hey, Alex. We got uh, we got some fun, some fun things to go over. We've got some new updates that we're going to be pushing later in this week, and then uh, some more materials. Uh, Tim, we saw your email. We're going to discuss that, and then we'll get back to you soon. Thank you. Yeah. First things first, I'll show you. So one of the things that I was working on over the weekend that I think is going to be pretty cool is this calculator. So I'm going to do a whole like tutorial on, on it. Um, hold on. So many people hit me up. All right, here we go. So this is the, this like ROI calculator. So this would be something that's really good to help showcase to businesses specifically on the customer support aspect. Mm -hmm. A lot of businesses or, or a lot of agencies use this for the, the Q&A aspect. So this will basically allow you to chain, you, you, you'll you be able to change these to be whatever your plans are, however you're selling this to businesses, mm -hmm. and then use this as a tool on your sales calls or whatever it may be to showcase the value of how much savings these AI tools or agents could save a business. Mm, that's cool. So this will be something that uh, you can build uh, build on a site called Calconic. Um, it's a free site, which is cool. So I'm just going to make a, I'll make a quick tutorial and an example of how you can duplicate this to make it match. Cause it took me an ungodly amount of time to make that. You'd, you'd think it'd be easy, but nothing's ever as easy as it looks on the TV. Nothing's, nothing's never easy. Yeah. So, um, cool. Tim, do you want to show your, uh, share your screen and show some of the new things that we've been working on? Yeah, definitely. Hey, okay, Jim. let me share. Okay, so we have two features that are actually going out, hold on a second, this week. And uh, that should be later this week, actually. <clears throat> so the first, and I'm gonna show you yeah. these features in staging because they're live in our staging environment right now. Um, and I'm not gonna be able to show the full functionality because of the way they work, but I'll be able to illustrate kind of where they are and it'll help you understand kind of what they do. The first one is white label marketplace. And just like I said- Real quick, oh, sorry, sorry, to, sorry to interrupt for everyone that does, is not familiar. Staging is just a word that we, we use for our in, internal development. So this is how we build stuff and test stuff internally. And then we make sure it's working properly before we release it into the live version, which is everything that you guys look. So. You're not, no one's able to access this, especially if you're watching this on YouTube, you're not able to access this. So don't worry. You'll see this in a couple of weeks when, when it gets uh, released. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, exactly. And technically there's both a staging and a UAT or user acceptance testing environment where we test everything. Uh, but Ross is absolutely right. This is for development. Uh, with white label marketplace, let's explain what that is. Yeah. So one thing we realized is that there's, there's more of an opportunity for you all to have your own versions of a marketplace where your individual bots have been loaded into. And that way, when your customers sign in, they can, you know, use those bots as templates and get started with them. And in the future, you could even possibly, you know, have some type of incentivization or monetization of those bots, which is actually why we call it the marketplace. And then the Stammer marketplace, realistically, realistically, we've all realized that it's best for us to add bots there that are targeted more at you guys, agencies. So that's the model we're moving to here. And now what you will be able to do with this new release is on any of your bots, you'll be able to come in here, click on marketplace, 
launch the chat bot through the exact same process we kind of shown before for our own marketplace. And that will make it available for your own customers. And you'll see the terminology in here is actually kind of changed to indicate that this is going to be for your private kind of agency marketplace. Mm -hmm. So that will be launching soon. Yeah. So when now, you're, when you're in your agency account and you see the marketplace, that is going to be all the bots that we stammer as a company have added that you can use and clone into your account that you could use those for your clients or whatever it may be. And then let's say you want to then, you, you know, you've made your own bots and you want to uh, give a, give the ability for other people to clone bots from your marketplace. That's what we're talking about. So essentially you'll be able to now, and this, and where this is headed, so you have kind of a, an idea of where this is headed to in the future is today it's adding chatbots that people can clone into your marketplace for free. Tomorrow, it's a marketplace where you can charge money for mark, for bots. It's fully public and open so that way you can sell them publicly or you know showcase them publicly. People could clone them into their account using the clonable share links. So a lot of these things that we've been working on are going to start to really tie together to be able to offer you guys as agencies a better and more functionality, a better way to, to sell these things to your clients. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And relatedly, shareable clone links, or that's actually a mouthful, I don't change that. But anyway, what you what that is, is exactly like Ross described. So if you go in here, view your chat bots, we're going to view this home gem one you'll be able to now create a link. So previously, right, you could create a share link and people could go to the bot and kind of chat with it, right? Now though, when you enable this and notice I can't do it because I don't have my custom domain set up in staging, but when you are able to click this, there's gonna be a button below that chat interface where a user can then click clone and that will automatically take them through a flow that allows them to clone that chat bot into their account. Now you may be wondering, okay, what if they don't have an account? Well, it'll lead them through a process where they create an account, uh, sign up for a free trial, and then it'll put it in their account all seamlessly. So this allows you to really share these links anywhere and say, hey, clone this, use this, go do this. Yeah, and this only works on full SaaS mode and it only works on when when you've added your custom domain and, and white labeling. Because uh, free trials are required and custom domain is, is required as well. Is required, yeah. So a use case for this, a marketing use case. You could write a blog post for a specific niche about top five ways AI can improve this business industry niche. And then, you know, give some some responses or answers. And then at the bottom, you have a call to action that says, hey, would you love to have an AI come into your business and apply these five things that I just told you about? click here. And that would lead them through that flow that Tim just mentioned, allowing them, allowing you to basically like prime people up and then have them take, uh, have, have them to take a call to action right then and there that allows you to capture their information, create an account, start your marketing flows on the back end through normal, e you know, your normal email automations and flows and things like that. Exactly. Any questions about that before I move to the next thing? Does that have prompts in it as well, or just bots to begin with? Just bots. Mm -hmm. The, the the prompts are envisioned to be in the bots, yep. but that is something we can explore if we if we continue to get requests for prompt specific libraries. So is that kind of what I was talking to you about with earlier, Ross? Kind of. So uh, the question earlier was in the share links. So uh, can you pop open that share links thing again, Tim? Yep. So the the question earlier was what if we want to be able to limit the usage of this bot on this share link? So yeah. basically the, the thought or what we, what I initially thought was we could add in functionality in here some way that would allow you to define how many responses, for example, yeah. the AI would send at which point when it reaches that threshold, Maybe, you know, some it like grays out or another message pops up that says, hey, you've reached the limit. Click here to upgrade uh, or something. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So that in theory, do that. without that much difficulty, yeah? Yeah. Right. It so could if, definitely be possible. There would be a way to get around it, but most users wouldn't know how to do that. So, okay. Yeah, basically just re-going to incognito windows endlessly. Right. But that's a hassle. That's, you know, that's a hassle. So. It goes yeah. with that. 
And it wouldn't continue the conversation either. No. I mean, it wouldn't go infinitely. Eventually it would run out again. Yeah. And they'd have yeah. to do it again. Yeah. yeah. There are some more advanced things we could do in the future. If it truly becomes a problem, we could look at IP addresses and run an algorithm. But yep. uh, it does. even that's not perfect, unfortunately. Because our, our, our vision is to kind of like create a, a, a bot for an industry. And mm -hmm. then if people are trial of that, but does it need to be a new bot every single person or can it be the same bot or how would that work? See where I'm coming from. If I'm sending this to 15 different plumbers, for example, they're getting the same bot, but they, how yep. does the credit thing won't work, will it? Because they're looking at the same bot. Oh, I see what you mean. No, no, no. So the, the number of invocations or the number of executions that you would allow would be based on us. So when a, when a user visits our chatbot in their browser, unbeknownst to them, they actually get a session token created, right? And that's how we remember their browser. We fingerprint it essentially, and all okay. applications do this. And it establishes a session. And so we know who they are in theory. We, we know their session ID. And then um, like Ross said, the only way they can reset that is to clear the uh, the cache, the browser. All right. So we only need to create one bot per link, if you like, and that can go to as many people as you want it to go to. Yeah. Right. And if we had that setting that, he, that you're talking about, it would only let that person go to five and then it would lock it down. Yeah. That's what I was going to. Yeah. So you could say, cool. fit, set that to 50 messages just so they get a flavor of the thing. Yep. Exactly. And that would die per that user. Exactly. And relatedly, I know someone was asking about spam protection recently. And I know one thing I just realized in my head is that we could actually adopt possibly some of Cloudflare's technology to prevent some of that possibility for bot and spam stuff. So mm -hmm. we, we will look into that because we're already using Cloudflare extensively. Yeah. We have a relationship with them. Um, yeah. yeah. Is that it? Any, any other questions about this uh, before I go on to streaming? No, I think that's covered. That's answered the question. Yeah. For me. Fantastic. Okay. Now streaming, this is our, our biggest priority right now. And that, to be honest, to be frank, has been driven by great feedback from you all that helped us realize, you know, that this is something we need to invest in. And the great news is that streaming is going very, very well. You all know, I don't like to set estimates because this is software development and we could find some problem that we have to figure out and it could take, you know, a week or something, but right now it's going well. So we hope to have it out very, very soon. What that will mean, because I want to reiterate what this actually means, yeah. just like you see in chat GPT today, how it's almost instantly sending that first character within a few seconds. In most cases, unless it's like a super heavy load, that's yeah. exactly what our chat bot is going to be doing also. So we're super excited about that. That should solve the all the speed issues honestly now we also have another approach that i'm calling turbo knowledge base approach it's actually the original way we were doing the knowledge base before we moved over to what you may have heard of heard of us refer to as knowledge base as a function we're going to for most bots until they until you turn on lead leads or appointment scheduling it will be using this turbo knowledge base approach which it works very well. It's basically injecting the knowledge base results into the prompt and then you send it to chat GPT and it takes those results and uses it to form an answer, a response. And so that will also further improve things and speed things up going forward, which should really give us, you know, a platform that's as fast as these things can possibly be. Is there, I don't know if this is even technically possible. Is there a way where it can do that? Even if you, if you, so it doesn't start doing the lead thing until it's mm. done what it needs to do. Right. Now, unfortunately, that's a much more difficult. So if you think about it, how do we know? So in order to switch from injecting the knowledge base results into the prompt to right. not doing it, we have to be able to ascertain when the user is not asking a question, right? Or, or a question that's appropriate for the knowledge base. And I haven't been able to come up with any kind of logic that's reliable for that. In fact, if you think about it, only chat GPT is smart enough to understand the context of the conversation, right? That's its entire job. Yeah. So there's no real good way around this that we know of. But doesn't that limit the size of your knowledge base? If you're going to port it across each time you do it, you do a prompt. 
Won't that that get to your query your your query window size very quickly? It would already be limited, even with the knowledge base as a function, because with an everything we send to Chat GPT, every piece of data gets calculated as part of the context window, including yeah. the, the the historical message history. Yeah. So if you're going to send data to Chat GPT, that's going to be part it, of the context window. It will also it it will still do the semantic search, so it will not return the entire knowledge base in the prompt. It will only oh, it will right. still yeah, only return the top three oh, results. Okay. So that, that was that was my question because I was looking at this going you know eventually you, you're going to hit a size limit on these on these knowledge bases so you do first do the semantic search on the knowledge base then ship whatever Correct. what's needed from in, into the prompt with that file. yeah thank you that answers my question and I probably did a bad job explaining it with with KB as a function knowledge base as a function we allow Chat GPT to use its function calling functionality to to kind of tell us when to search the, the knowledge base for it yeah. with this older approach that's actually much faster we're going to move back to using that unless you turn on leads or scheduling all right yeah. so, so to to the user to to the user or to you as an agency owner nothing is going to be different or it's not going to look different the only right. the only other option will be a little there'll be a little tab somewhere that says enable streaming and when that is enabled, like Tim said, the response will come in easily and it's going to match chat GPT. So it will, it will come in, it might like stutter or stop for a second, and then it will continue. And then until the entire response now streaming, maybe, maybe everybody else is smarter than me, but I, I'm not catching what you, what you're doing. Currently you have a knowledge base. Yeah. When you send something over, it pulls the contents of the knowledge base, that sub content thing that it needs passes that as part of the prompt. So that's that's in your in your 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 chat at that point. And then what's what's the difference with streaming? So what's going on right now is this is how the system is currently set up. And this is exactly what you basically just explained. We're going, we're searching for the knowledge base. This the the results from the knowledge base are getting added to the base system prompt and all of that stuff is being sent to OpenAI. What's happening right now today is we're waiting for OpenAI to generate the entire response. So our system is waiting for them to give us the full response, at which point we are then displaying the response Brilliant. back to the user. Yeah. What Smart. streaming Smart. is going to do is going to initiate is going to immediately make that connection yeah. and start sending it. Yeah, I know. Really smart. Good for you. That's uh yeah. I see what you're doing. It's using WebSockets essentially. So we establish a consistent, a constant connection with the OpenAI API. And the moment the model starts to generate, you know, the first character of text, we relay it onto our system, to, to your yeah. system, to your browser. Yeah. So then in the future, when all, when these three things have been enabled within the next week or two, when you go through the process of creating an, a bot, it will be instant you know you'll have those instant answers when you then enable leads or then you enable scheduling there will be a pop-up that says like hey now you're doing a lot more stuff basically so if it takes a, a, a couple of other seconds like just know that it's doing stuff like it's going here and coming back like and we're going to explain that in like one sentence i won't it won't be as long as this <laughs> but the idea is like it's just going to work better always regardless of you know you doing stuff basically users don't care what the progress is as long as they see progress exactly yeah really yeah. don't they'll watch a little clock go around and feel happy but it's when when there's no <laughs> signal but you don't that, that yeah. yeah when there's when there's no signal that's when that's when we break down that's mm. so funny that you mentioned that we have a couple of, of good examples for that well, that's true also, but but also the reason we're having to invest in this streaming now is because we do have, you know, experiences that people are experiencing, like within the chat GPT interface itself every day where it starts streaming immediately. And so they see that and they're like, okay, well, yeah, it should be doing that. And and they're right. I mean, that's why we're doing this. Yeah. No, it's so, perfect. Yep. Good for you. Which is more important, the base prompt or the knowledge base? What how does how does it work? Which goes should should there be a, a very basic ba knowledge? Sorry, a very basic base prompt, and then everything like no. You know. Think of the knowledge base as like uh, 
almost like a human going through a book, right? And he's 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 searching. Like, let's say you're trying to find out something about cats, right? What food do cats like? So you're going to go through a book and you're going to look literally for titles of paragraphs to say, here's what cats eat or here's what cats like to eat. And you're going to find three results. You're going to cut an excerpt from those books, right. put it into your main notebook, and then you're going to go and summarize that as a human and come up with a, a, a book report. Mm -hmm. So the knowledge base is always extra information and it's not perfect, right? Because we can't fit the entire knowledge base into the context window. Like Jim was saying earlier, um, we can't fit that whole knowledge base in there. So it's a way to add extra information and to get around the the limitations of the chat bot, not the chat bot of the LLM memory size or context window. Okay. This question, but does it know the knowledge base and does it then not have to keep referring back to it? Is that, or was that just me in fantasy land here? Um, oh, you mean no. like once you give it results? Yeah, once once it's seen the knowledge base, does it know it? And then if you yes, add it... yes, oh, right. as long as long as that message where it saw the prior information that you sent it continues to be in the in the history, because oh, the oh. Chat GPT interface, like I covered in a video, we okay. discovered that the Chat GPT interface is actually doing token counting. And right. once you get over the token limit for a certain model, it starts dropping old conversations, which oh, is right. why Ross has had issues in the past where, you know, he's got this long conversation and he defined these complex instructions up above and suddenly it starts to forget and goes bad. That's why. Yeah. Dynamic contextual information would be a good one-liner for the knowledge base. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's examples or use cases of bots that we've tested or done for other example. And I kind of, I sent some screenshots for, in this of the, in the agency chat last week about, uh, I think Brock and I were talking about the email use case. You don't necessarily need to put anything in the knowledge base in order for, to add custom instructions to do different things. So for mm -hmm. example, in the knowledge base, you could just put like, a, you know, the word, hey, to satisfy that there's something there to create the bot, but then the entire instructions can be static inside the, and inside the prompt. So mm -hmm. for example, if you're trying to do like a qualification of text where the results that you're getting back, back from the AI is a static result, then you don't necessarily need anything in the knowledge base. And then you can just use the information that's in the base system prompt. So there's, there's different ways that you can kind of use it once you kind of get into the depths and figure out, oh, I don't actually need this for this specific use case, for example. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And if, if, you, if whatever your, if whatever information that you want the bot to know about will fit into the knowledge base, uh, sorry, the base system prompt. And remember, you guys can use those token counters that I've shared before to search chat GPT token counter on Google, but if it fits within that, not, that token size, you should just put it in the base system prompt, to be honest. If it's not, if it's a large amount of information, then it needs to go into the knowledge base and it needs to be structured properly, right? Because remember that example I just said, if you're a human looking for what kind of food do cats eat, how are you gonna search for that? Well, are you gonna go in there and look and say, look for strings that mean what do cats eat, right? Then you're gonna look at the surrounding text. That's how semantic search works. <laughs> Can you, do you think, put into the training, if you like, for want of a better word, a, examples how to lay out these prompts so they look right with hypotheticals? We're working on that right now. Yeah, but I think we're getting, we're all getting the prompt thing. We're just not necessarily, I might be talking just about myself, but the reality is, is I, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, well, this looks right to me, but is it right to chat GPT? So therefore, is it going to do what I think it's going to do? And nine times out of 10, it seems to, but you have to kind of move about, move things about. But there must be a set format this thing presumably would work best at. And that's the knowledge base or for? In general, that's that's the information that we're working off of oh, from yes. OpenAI, from Anthrop. Okay. Like mm -hmm. this stuff is so new that your testing is the best, the best answers that you could possibly get is Oh, does this work for me? Test it. Oh, it doesn't work. Change yeah. how it works. Yeah. Okay, great. You're never going to get a one-to-one -one from this, though. The, the 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 whole point of this is if you consider this to be like compression, it 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 like it's true. A yeah. Mathematical representation of this thing, and you could hit that six different ways with 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 the slightest of a nuance, 
and you'll get a different answer. Or if you even ask the same question on a different day, you can get a totally different answer. Now so I did that. Really uh, hard to map one to one. You 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 really you, you have to. Yeah. It's, that's the tough part of this. The, making it intelligent is one is what they did, but it made it just the same as a friend. You can ask a question to your friend today. And don't and you talk, give you a yeah. So this is an interesting thing from Anthropic. This is for Claude. This is not for ChatGPT or OpenAI, but this illustrates the concepts or the ideas of how to structure a prompt and some of the different things that you might want to consider adding into your prompt. That's useful. So obviously, like, you know, this has a lot of stuff in here that's, like I said, not applicable for OpenAI or ChatGPT, like these tags guide or, do, you know, document that doesn't that won't work, but the concepts, the theory behind this, it's mm. very similar. So we're working right now to basically adapt this for us, for Stammer. Yeah, that would work brilliantly. Yeah. So basically you would then just fill in the bulk in the box. Yeah. No, this would be advice and tutorials and, and examples that you could then use and follow to then build out yourself. In principle, you could fill out the box on a piece of paper and then copy it back in, couldn't you? I see what you're saying. Yeah, like a template. It's a good idea. I mean, you, you test them out. I, what I do is I put the, these things together. I test them on chat GPT. Just mm -hmm. let's see what type of response I get from it. And and then I save the ones that work. Because if you keep them structured well, mm -hmm. you'll, That's you'll, the case, you'll, you'll stay in the same range. range. Mm -hmm. Like it's... But once you get the structure right, you want to, you want to cut and paste and put it somewhere because... You'll forget how you did it. Yeah. Yes. And yes. that will be the power of the white label marketplace. You can figure those out. And then once you figure them out, add them to the marketplace. And now every one of your clients is now using your best version of your best bot that you've created and spent all this time to perfect. All your clients can now just use that within one click. Because in reality, most industries are the same principles, aren't they? They're just variations on the thing. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. You sell a, you know, if you sell a pair of shoes or you sell a pair of socks, effectively, it's irrelevant what you're selling. It's just a selling bot. So well, it's, it's the... also within the 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 limitations of everything that we're kind of dealing with, just in general. Like, yeah, there's really four. You know, there's having a conversation. There's getting questions and answers. There's sched. There's leads and there's scheduling. Yeah. And that's yeah. pretty much it, isn't it? That cut, I mean, and Q and A covers probably ninety percent of use cases. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Tim, did you want to? Was there another thing on your list, or was that was streaming the last one? Uh, no, we covered Turbo KB. Um, oh yeah, so I think we're good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, not that you haven't done a lot of work. Hey, anything else? <laughs> we do have other things, but we don't want to. They'll just go out and we'll put them in the release notes. Yeah. I have I have a question that I've stumbled with, and maybe you guys excuse me for this. I'm having real problems getting um, two things. One is 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 sometimes um, the knowledge base just refuses to learn, and that I'm I'm really stumbling with that. Um, and it it comes with things like, like I I must have just done a hundred tests, get, trying to get it to recognize a a, a a phone number on the website. So couldn't find the phone number, so you train it. And it does, and then you go in and you you put you put in specific text for it, and it just refuses to get it, and that's why I put I actually put in a, a, a something there saying at one point or another if 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 the knowledge base is going to be semantically driven as opposed to another, uh -huh. you, you really do have to find a way to search it to find out what it knows because you you, you could spend a lot of time trying just asking and finding nothing. Uh, so, you know, so then that, that's a class we've, I've hit this two or three times where it refuses to take an instruction mm -hmm. and you go like, I have no idea, um, you know, what, how I can introduce that. I introduce a text, I put it in and, and retrain. I, I, I actually, I've actually gone back and, and taken all of the, you know, retrained the whole thing on the website again, you know, just to see whether it would pick it up. But once it stubbornly won't find something, it won't find it. Hmm. What do you think? You know, and that that was that was surprising me for something like a phone number, because a phone number is a pretty pretty solid construct. You know, like it. And it, how it, is that phone number labeled? In the, and, and actually, I'm going to be creating 
a um, a video today about debugging chatbot responses. Oh, that'd be great, yeah. yeah. So Jim, Jim, you went in and you click train better response and then you're like, what is the phone number? And then you put in the phone number, click save, and then you went through and it still wouldn't find it? Yep, I parroted exactly what it said because I figured, okay. well, it needs to be. So it says, you know, I can't find it, it. And it came up with different things. So it came up first time it came up, can't find the phone number. It says, you don't, the, the company does not have a phone number. Okay, well, I know it does. So I went in and I, I, I went in to train a better response. And then I put it into the text part of the knowledge base and said, okay, I'll, I'll just take what it says I haven't got and I'll, I'll, I'll describe it and put it in there. And then finally, I, I went through and I, I, deleted on the website and, and retrained it to try and find it but it just it's one of those things once it gets stuck on something like that it, it and I, I was going to go put the phone number in the base prompt but that seemed like overkill um i would put it in the base system prompt but what you have to understand is the way the semantic search works and like i said earlier it's going to search for in my example something to do with cats right and if the phone number doesn't say phone number colon oh, it's and then, phone number pretty clearly yeah Got it. So yeah, then when we when I do the debugging video today, you can actually see the results it's getting from the knowledge base. All right. And then you that's can find out that's why what I, it's yeah. But that's what I need. It's probably something it's, simple, but well, I, the phone number is an easy thing. I can fix that. Put in the base prompt. I'm going to hit this in a client where there's going to be some piece of information it won't pick up, and they're going to look and go, "Why isn't it doing this?" And that's so that's, that's my a good point. So. We have anticipated this and what we're developing. So semantic search is great for searching certain types of documents, right? Usually writ, uh, documents that are textbooks almost. Um, it's not great for recalling specific information about a product or a service where you need exact information about that particular thing. So in that case, we are developing functionality where the chat bot will actually be able to kind of access a type of database, right? It'll take in the name of a product and approximate a, 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 a name that maybe is not perfect. And so maybe we'll do fuzzy matching or something, but it'll take in the name of a product, match that to an actual item in the database and then return all the information to the chat bot. So that has all the information it needs about that product. That's what I was thinking with Rod, Russ, you had a video where you're talking about databases that, that yep. would, would solve that problem because then you just regress the structural yeah. ways of, of storing it. Yeah. It's fine. Ways. You know that that's the point, and I'm I'm a lot, you know, a lot of you guys may be doing this in agency. I'm doing it as a services play, so I'm just as happy that, they, that these people need some services to help tune the bot. I mean, that's for me. That's yeah, that, that, for me. Data cleaning too. That's another one. We had a we had a client a while back that was uh, their client used it, and they were like, "Oh, that's not right information." And it was actually, they were, the agency was able to flip it into a website deal because they were like, oh, that means your website agency is not doing their job. We'll go in and fix. So it was old information that the website agency hadn't yeah. fixed for them. So then they flipped that into an upsell offer to them. So it's like the AI bot found old information, which then they they found. Yeah. It's pretty Although on a test I did, I put in two files to demonstrate this. One was old. I, I, I just separated them with dates. And I put in two files into the knowledge base and it picked the most current one. That's pretty cool. That was, that was kind of cool. Now I structured the question while well. I said, well, you know, what's the most recent or something like that, but it, it actually grabbed it. I was, it was so, so, but yeah, finding old information and cleaning it up that is going to be a big deal because people yeah. have all kinds of crap in their documents that they don't even know they've got that is yeah. old. So going off of this thread, here's an interesting idea that we've kind of mulled around that maybe I'll, I'll throw it to you guys to get your feedback on. We've been thinking about how to, how the scraping process is, could be better, let's say. So as of it, as it stands right now, the scraper pulls all of the text, all of the data on the web page. Uh, not any JavaScript or anything like that, just the text. But still, there's a lot of text on web pages that's not really relevant to the actual information on the web page. That's In true. the past, one of the things that we've told people is what you could do is go to the web page, copy the URL, bring it into ChatGPT, and use something like the WebPilot plugin to generate a question and answer pair or question and answer pairs based off of this web page's data. And typically that would yield a result of like 10 questions and answers 
that are based off of that web page. That's the idea. Now, the implementation of this theoretically could be where you go to scrape a website and then there's a little option that says clean data or you know generate QA from this website. And instead of it pulling just that data, it, we would run it in the background through ChatGPT to generate those Q&As automatically based off of that web. So it's like a pseudo cleaning of the data. We could offer this as an upsell as well, where theoretically, if your client or agent wanted or whoever wanted to be able to do it, because we would have, you know, this is going to be run through ChatGPT yet. So there's going to be some sort of associated cost. Honestly, I think I could I'd do that myself. The one that I'm most concerned okay. about is is proprietary docs hmm. and that's going to be creating that creating the summary from the proprietary documentation and letting them like we, we dump in a whole pile of pdfs what i for that part of it what i really love is 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 generating that type of summary so that people could actually clean it up and that's for users who have a lot of documentation you know that those are that's or when you're going out for ancillary documentation, because I, I look at this, like mortgage brokers and pe people like that, we haven't gotten into them yet. We're, we're sort of sticking on with, with some basic clients. But I was looking at mortgage brokers the other day, and, and they you know, they all have these things where they want to offer Q&A from reputable sources. How do I mortgage my home? How do I do that? You know, all those things. And once they start to pull that stuff in, they're going to want to control that information in some way, shape, or form. Anyway, that's just me. But that's that's what I'm looking at is, is when that... When, when it's on their website, uh, there's enough tools in chat GPT. I can, I can pull their, for most websites, I clean it in an afternoon. Uh, Got it. With it just chat GPT without having to automate it. Uh, but other documentation, that's when it really, you start to think about. And it may very well be a chat GPT routine that we end up trying to use to, to say, pull this stuff in and, and see what's in it. Yeah. You know, but I, I don't know what I'm going to do about that yet. What if we, we did a, what if we did a, like a not like we buy the knowledge, we could even do it like per section or like by the knowledge base, like <laughs> optimize the knowledge base or clean the knowledge base. Yeah. That's going to, that's good. That, that, that's going to have some, some legs. I'll, I'll give you some more use cases as we start to work through this engineering company. I know we're going to hit them. Okay. I just, know we're going to hit them. Cool. Like old information, different information, stuff that doesn't pull. It's going to be that, that, that part is going to be, and that's the one area I want to focus in because it's it it's difficult. If it's difficult, then people will pay you to do it. Yep. Mm -hmm. is, cool. there, is there a restriction on the size of that knowledge base though that you can load in regardless of whether it's a PDF or a Word document or text? What's there will what's the be within the the platform. There will be technically no. There will be very soon. By the time that people are watching this on YouTube, there will be. So no no scraping Wikipedia. Sorry. But in theory, yeah, no issue scraping a website. No, it's going to be so large that people are going to have trouble hitting the limits. Yeah, I mean, obviously, if you scrape Amazon, it would be a bit crazy, but yeah, I mean. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're, yeah. We're, we're talking like 60 million characters, which is equivalent of like 6,000 pages of a book. Yeah. So it's an obscene amount of data. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and that's not us just imposing arbitrary limits, to be clear. If it was possible, we would just make it unlimited. The problem is that all of that literally goes into memory. Um, and as you know, memory is is quite expensive these days. And so it has to, the reason it has to sit there in memory is because of fast response times, right? The vector database we use, it's got to be super fast. And it is, it's in milliseconds. But because of that, it, it, we had to have a large size memory, a large well, amount of memory. Honestly, one of the things that and Eben and I have uh, Eben worked for me and I have, have have argued about this. We're 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 going to go in with a methodology that says you want to restrict what you put in there. Exactly. Okay. Yes. Are you smart about it. Yes. And the reason you want to be really smart about it is a because you want it to be no you want it to be right. B to be fast and C you want to know what's there. So we're going to create an inventory. Yep. Of what you put in. That's why I was saying I was going to look at things like an automated summary of things. There's and there's tools we can use for now to actually go through and say summarize that stuff and and find out what's in it. But but if you just dump everything in there, you're going to run into real problems, really stupid problems, and you're going to go looking for dumb things that you can't. Yep. You know, there'll be a bad answer, and you'll be you'll have 50, 60 documents, and you won't know which the hell they are, and you'll just be sitting there with the client looking at you, going, "This is wrong. This is wrong." 
Just well, because we well. give you 60 million characters doesn't mean you should use yeah. 60 characters. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah, that's a good point. In fact, you should probably shouldn't use 59 million of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I grew up in the days when we had 256K on our disk drives on our main. On our yeah. main. So <laughs> just it's it's an old habit. I think mm -hmm. the first my I had, you know, the the classic MP3 player before, I, you know, I'm 30. So I just touched on that right before uh, uh, Apple took over. And I think my first one was one gigabyte. And I could my, I could pull, uh, you know, my first PC was eight gigabytes. My, my was, first was big big office PC, money that we were wheeled in with a 20 megabyte hard drive. I oh, thought it would yeah. take me my entire life to fill it up. Yeah, <laughs> that means that's funny. I, I got I got PowerPoint presentations bigger than that. Yeah, <laughs> my first PC didn't have a hard drive. Actually, it was two floppy disks. <laughs> yeah, it was a Tandy. Yeah. I don't know. Do you guys remember Tandy? Yeah, you had a Tandy. Okay, I had the yeah. with the with with the cassette tape that you had. Oh, geez. Tape. Okay, I didn't have the cassette <laughs> tape. I didn't press it. Yeah, yeah, it <laughs> was amazing. That's People don't realize they used to store stuff on. Well, I mean, they still do, right? For large. Large, uh, AWS cold storage, and whatever it's been, called these days. It's, it's, tape. it's tape storage. Yeah. Is it really? Yeah, it's it's 100% tape storage. That's the only way it could be that low of a cost. There's still a ton of tape out there. You'd be surprised. Yeah. And by the way, the floppy disk just finally died. Really? What do you mean? Disk. Yeah. I did it. I do this this daily tech podcast. And, and the last really? usage of them were in Japan, those old 3.5 floppies. They uh -huh. finally retired because they used to attach to the Japanese official documents. And so there's I a see. guy in the U.S. who lost his job because he had a he had a, a he used to recycle these things for for 50 guys in Japan. Wow. That is so perfect that it's Japan that did that because if you've been to that country, it's a strange oh. mix of like old technology <laughs> with new. It's yeah. like the weirdest thing. When they went in to talk to the minister to tell him they'd written that they, they they changed this rule, he says, "How the hell do you buy a floppy drive?" They Sorry. still use faxes there. Yeah. It's crazy that we're we're talking about white label AI and floppy disks in the same conversation. Like that's a pretty pretty crazy dynamic. And you know, think about where this stuff is going to be in six months from now. Yeah, maybe there'll be an AI here yeah. talking. That being said, the voice the voice stuff has gotten significantly better in the last three months. So, yep. One of our developers our was yeah, uh, was taking a look at it and. He was it, blown away. It impressed him so much that he like was like, "We, we got to do it. We got to yeah, we got to do it." So for everyone that was <laughs> you know, natural intro for especially for for small businesses, if you can actually get to voice in there. Yeah, I mean, just, a lot of the big players have voice that 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 they're doing. It's pretty good too. Um, you know, the I mean, the Chat GPT voice is 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 hundred times better than 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 most even the stuff in my car yeah uh, so that that type of voice instruction will will hit us eventually yeah before i go off tangent does anybody have any other questions about stammer any faqs anything that we can help out with i had a strange case which i asked drew about last week yeah i can't describe it really because i haven't got an example now um but what was happening is it was asking the question the wrong way around do you get what i mean the order of the questions yeah, the question, it was basically giving, if you try to change the question, you know how you do the Q&A question thing to up, make it better? There's certain questions, if you ask it, the questions are the, the other way around. So the answer was basically the question, and the question is basically the answer. That's Drew, weird. I spoke to Drew about it. He said he was going to talk to you about it, or he was going to look into it. That's weird. Send me a screenshot or something in Discord yeah. so I can, I can look. I Remember what I gave Drew? Yeah. Yeah. It will ask the questions in the order that you've created them. Yes. So that's one thing. So the yeah. one at the very bottom is the first question. Oh. Because that's the first question that you've made. And I know that's confusing. We're It's right. on our list to fix, trust me. But it's the order that you've made the question, not uh, the order right. of the questions. Right. So the order you actually answer, got the questions answered in. No, no. Created. As in the prompt. In yeah, in yeah, we need which, to change which that. which questions the ones in your base system prompt or the one in leads? Uh, I was talking yeah. about the ones in leads when you're in leads and you and you create fields. When you create a field, the order of which you've created them will it will ask them in that order. Yeah, I don't know, I'll have to, I can't remember because I me, gave it, yeah, okay. Send me a screenshot, we'll we'll get it fixed because he said, I don't know why it's doing that, he couldn't work it out either. Uh, yeah. Ross, we should also cover 
the the model changes since we're starting mm -hmm. to use the new one soon yes 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 which should reduce laziness I, I in that video i did yesterday i was talking about that when sam altman tweeted about it too he he's he tweeted yeah. it was like oh it's supposed to be less lazy now we're like all right we'll we'll see um yeah so in general <laughs> we're going to be the new model that was released was a, the new the updated 3.5 model so we're going to be introducing that over the next couple of weeks and then hopefully that should just make everything better um, four was updated also ross it's just they didn't change the pricing or 3.5 updated 3.5 turbo was updated okay and i guess four as well uh um, so, yeah yeah so as it stands right now everything on our platform is staying the exact same All right what will happen over the next weeks or so is we're going to reduce the cost of gpt4 turbo and four to start matching with the new pricing that OpenAI has given us. Right. It's almost as difficult as creating that calculator I was showing earlier because OpenAI has so many different types of pricing models and, and our system is complex. So we're working on that. Um, but as it stands right now, everything is the exact same in terms of pricing, credits, everything is the exact same. We're just gonna be introducing and updating the new models. Everything will look the same to you guys, but just know now that we're using the most updated models. Right. So is 3.5 turbo still not going to be good enough for most things, realistically? For, I know Tim was saying last week it might be, but we didn't know. Correct. After we add this, these couple things that we've mentioned today, uh, streaming, make, uh, adding the functionality, using 3.5 for just Q and A and and having a conversations will work much better. Right. When you enable leads or enable scheduling, it will be required to use G4 Turbo or 4 because okay. it just won't be reliable enough. Okay. So we're going to implement that change on everyone's behalf because mm -hmm. the amount of headaches you guys are going to have trying to, oh, it doesn't work. Well, it's, you know, we're just going to yeah. cut that off immediately. So yeah, that will, that will be better. And then as from... Open AI, you know, that what they're giving, the information that they're giving us is that it's more reliable, it's less lazy, it's less likely to hallucinate. So that yeah. we're adapting all of that. So in theory, all those things should apply to 3.5. Yeah. yeah. Cool. May I have yes. a cool question? Yeah. Yeah. Just a uh, quick sales question. Um, oh. Like, yeah, just curious. Oh, sorry. Were you talking to us? Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, Justin. Uh, Lucas, I'll get you next. I just had a sales question uh, for everyone. Um, you know, anyone have any big successes last week? Anyone sell three bots, five bots, 10 bots? And and can you share any kind of pointers with that? And then, and then if so, and if not, what was the thing preventing you from selling more bots? Good question. Hmm. Well, Tim, I know, uh, I don't want to put you, you know, too much on the spot. Tim, I know you had that article out that you won that thing. Did you get any clients from... You know, kind of working off of that question, did you were you, were you able to get clients from that? That that got me a conversation with uh, Salesforce directly, which was cool. Oh, wow. That's because awesome. One of my clients is wanting to do the CRM integration there. Mm -hmm. uh, I have another client bubbling under this week who we, we hope to have. They've already given me an, an intent, but there's a much bigger project there, so I'm hopefully we'll be able to share that in a, a day or two. Um, yeah, I think it's just about, you know, making noise, just keep, I mean, I know Tim's quite active on LinkedIn and he'll back me with this. It's, you know, just go out there and make noise and just talk about the stuff that you do because that's what creates the interest. And also doing the demos, just creating a demo bot and just sending it to people and letting them play with it. Usually it's best on a, on a, a Zoom or a Teams call so that you can actually talk them through it rather than just letting them loose but then leaving it with them so for them to play with usually blows them away yeah that's awesome we have a webinar that's coming awesome. up that we're doing well and some ads and, and an article and i'm interested to test to see what the response to each one of those is uh i mean i took for the article i took the the aim of saying there's something new that's happening i'm, I'm, I'm emphasizing rag and saying that this is going to change the dynamic for small and medium-sized businesses so that's yeah. the sort of the approach that i'm i'm taking uh with that but we'll we'll i'll let you guys know in a couple of weeks because we'll we should get the results back from about all three of these these things we're, but we're going go bigger stay home 
That's awesome, oh, yeah. Jim. And if I could ask Jim, like, where, like, what's your top of funnel? Like, who, who are you guys targeting specifically? Any any type of business, or are you just like, is it all SMBs? I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm staying in SMBs because I don't think that 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 I want to fight it out with Ring Central and stuff like that, and or the other people are doing this sort of stuff in the bigger companies. So I'm st I'm sticking with SMBs uh, in in this. I'm going after, I'm doing a wide approach to figure out who bites. And my aim is to find two or three areas where we can really excel at it and 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 pick those ones. So I'm 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 sort of doing a spray and pray right now, but that but who comes in will tell me what what the response to that message is. Oh, so that mm -hmm. yeah. Mm, makes cool. sense. And then what are you gonna flip that into your main niche? Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking for something we can replicate over and over again. Yeah. And I keep going up. I like, I, I, I keep going up and trying to find things, but I want to find people who've got enough money to actually pay, like I said, for the services part of it. Yeah. And, and if we do that, then, then we're good. And then they don't care about like, whether they're going to pay a hundred bucks for 200 bucks a month or 300, like that, that, that's, that's not a, that's not relevant to those yeah. guys, you know? So that, that's what I'm trying to do is to get into that, that mid niche. So, uh, and, and, and if that works, that's great. It's just because the other ones are I, like dealing with companies that have two to 10 people and, and whether they're going to spend a hundred bucks and all that stuff is just, I'm not set up to do that. Some of you guys like sound like you're doing an agency where you can actually replicate and do a retail version. I, I'm not, I'm not good at that. Never have been. Thanks for that feedback. I'll share that with you guys as we go through this. Cause I, I run a mark, I, I run a publication. So I like, I, I'm using my. My publisher and to to do this stuff i'm glad to share the the results with you guys as to what we get and what what we find out we're sort of all in this together awesome yeah that'd be great thank you uh lucas you had, you had, a, you had a question yep a quick one regarding the integrations uh you mm -hmm. think there'll be a feature a kind of a handoff right because on social media i think it would be quite important to have something that would allow the chatbot to just stop and leave the message unread for the yeah for whoever admins the the account to respond afterwards if if the client wants to would that be integrated also in your so we don't have to use anything else eventually yes we'll get started with v1 where it's just the the standard connection and then we've already worked on implementing the i believe it's the we have terms for it. it's like the cancel message or the handoff message it's basically like this a similar uh the equivalent in something like ghl would be the if statement to yeah. check what is in their reply message and if it satisfies that that statement then it would do that action it would stop or it would you know it would do something and yep. and we're trying to replicate that in as a easy to understand way as something like Zapier or GHL or something that we're all kind of generally familiar with. So it's something it's going to be something related to that, like a yeah, yeah. Cool. On the GHL thing, I, I think I asked this question in in the chat earlier. Um, once you've created the one which you did as example, Facebook, right? Mm -hmm. Apart from the UID stays the same, does it for all of the others for Instagram for SMS, all those things stay the same. So essentially, you just duplicate it and then change the the parameters. Yes, right. You so could you do that, that, or you can make, oh. or you can make the trigger be multiple triggers. It replies from this channel, or it replies from this ah, channel, yeah, or it replies triggers. from this channel. That would look neater, wouldn't it? Yeah, that would be neater. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And then what you could do, what you could do is then do ta tags based on the reply channel. Right. So yeah. And then do the, the four. So the, the flow would look a little bit more spidery, but it is retained for one bot in one place. One bot would be in one place. Yeah. yeah. As opposed to like four, I've got like five or six. Yep. Exactly. And you guys get... are by the Facebook API changes. The, the sorry, can you say it, it again? You're going to get hit by the Facebook API changes. Which ones are you referring to? They're, they've announced a couple of days ago that they're going to be changing some of the, the the stuff in their API. It sounds like another Reddit thing all over again. But they're mm -hmm. they they they're one of the things in posting to groups and stuff like that is going to be restricted. I don't know what other other changes they're making to it, but it was, I looked at it and went, "Oh, great!" You know, so 
Yeah. Well, we'll we'll adapt just like normal. You have to accept these companies just don't change for the fun of it half the time. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, I mean, Facebook, Meta. They're, I mean, they're they're a fickle fickle as they come. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good at implementing that. Yeah. They'll squash you like a bug. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're just terrible. They oh now God. put you in a reverse rear naked chokehold. That's been good, guys. Thank you very much. I appreciate these calls. It's good. Yeah, you're welcome. Cool. Ross, um, would you be able to share that um, your Miro on the, the speed of the bot? That would be really helpful. Yes. You know, oh, is that a new Miro? Yeah, it, sh it should be in the resources tab. Uh, okay. If not, just let me know and I'll I'll add it in there. Okay, cool. cool. Awesome. Well, thanks, guys. Talk to you next week. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Have a good one. Bye.